Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Green Effect Podcast. This is episode number 38, part two of two, with Dan Gibson, the creator of The Baby Gang. So in part one, we went through some awesome topics. Part two, just as much fun. But we really have a specific um, topic around social media. So we're going to talk about Facebook versus Instagram, hashtags, 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 cards on YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok, and I'm on TikTok now. It's kind of cool. Privacy in general with social media. Is it to be expected that we even have privacy anymore? And then we talk about uh, Corey, his wife, and partnering with different companies and all sorts of cool things like that. So part two, same sort of excitement as part one. And without further ado, here's the interview with Dan Gibson. Welcome to the Green Effect Podcast. Finance, life, business, and everything in between. And now, your host, Stephen Green. So is it still, to steal some of your ideas and thoughts and experiences, is it still Facebook is probably for like age 35 and older? And then Instagram is for 35 and younger. Is that is that what you're seeing in your demographic? I, I think younger, a lot of younger folks, I guess it's the Generation Z. Um, mm-hmm. They're, yeah, they're kind of, they're on Facebook, but they don't use it. Mm. Or they don't have it to begin with. Even Instagram, um, they're not really, they'll have it. They might have the, the odd, you know, you, you'll see a lot of artists or a lot of younger people. They'll have like five posts, but that's just about it. They're not really using it. They're just kind of using it to, I guess, kind of scroll through. Yeah. Um, Snapchat, I would say, is relatively popular with a lot of people, a lot of younger people in general. Is it still going on? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I know my, my kids are off it. Oh, completely. yeah. I'm on it. I see yeah. a lot of younger people that do use it. Um, there's just a lot of creativity that you can use. And again, it's a vertical style video and you can translate that over to Instagram or a TikTok mm. and things like that. Okay. Um, you know, everybody's coming out with filters and and uh, different types of uh, video features in the video and you can just save it and it just comes content for all platforms all of a sudden. Right. Right. Um, even YouTube is a little bit of a struggle with the content because they only allow their videos to be shown in um, landscape view, mm-hmm. but it will allow you to post in vertical view. It's just condensed with a black background. Yeah, and it's, or it's got like a fuzzy uh, background. Or yeah, which, this, which, which ends, is okay, right? which is okay, but people need to kind of focus on creating their content and being consistent. Yeah. Um, and doing it because they want to, and remaining genuine to their niche and what their authentic message is about, basically. What's the difference between? Other than the, the demographic and the age and stuff like that, what's the difference? And I know you mentioned the videos and stuff. Yeah. How do you market differently on Facebook than Instagram, for example? Well, Instagram is is probably one of my favorite, most favorite platforms with just the simplicity behind it. Um, you know, the types of content that you can shoot. Um, They've made it more uh, integrated with longer video as well. It's kind of like that all-inclusive platform. But you'll see the difference between the most popular websites and the most popular social platforms changing consistently. And Instagram is that one where you can reach potentially the most. Um, I like sometimes trying to promote certain content, but it just depends on if I feel like it's going to be good, a good piece of um, content to promote. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I really had a, a simpler answer for what I choose to promote and what I don't. Um, but I just post because I enjoy it. It's a platform I'm trying to grow. Um, I'm trying to reach a specific audience using certain hashtags. Um, not trying to overdo it, um, but then also keeping that genuine authenticity. You know, not trying to show I'm living this lavish lifestyle. I'm going on these expensive vacations or whatever. And some people might be doing that. That's great. But I also am trying to show, you know, I have four kids, family of six. Our house is, you know, not something major mansion. And we live a, you know, humble and realistic lifestyle. And we've settled that where there's toys everywhere. There's scratches and holes in the wall, whatever it is. And it's all something that can be fixed at some point in time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Explain to me hashtags because I see some posts and yeah. it's like, here's our, here's the fireplace. And then there's like a thousand hashtags. <laughs> w- w- what was up? I think that was so, a so strategy. Yeah. I think it's more for Instagram. Yeah. 
explain this hashtag I, thing to me. Hashtags are just a way to connect to s- this, those similar types of content, right? So if you post a fireplace, of course, you're going to hashtag fireplace. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to bring you to a whole thing of fireplaces, a whole page dedicated. So And you can follow the hashtags. You can now, yeah, Instagram specifically, you can follow the hashtags and it'll just come up in your newsfeed as, as, as a regular post. But it's kind of geared towards what people are interested in, right? So again, you know, I'll generally post the tri- like triplets, triplets of Instagram, because it will showcase that this is who I who we are. We actually have triplets. Other people will just use hashtags just to try and get the exposure. So it's one way or the other where you'll just put like beautiful, which is so broad of a term that literally everything can be beautiful, and you can literally use that hashtag for everything, or you can niche it down to specific types of you know uh twins of instagram uh Mm. triplets the baby gang where it's unique to you as a brand the only thing is is that hashtagging a million things in a photo now is not as popular as it was maybe like one to two or three years ago um now it's about because if you put a hashtag beautiful you're going to see that that hashtag has been used a hundred million times there's no way your photos ever going to get exposed there it's more about finding a unique niche hashtag where it could potentially bring you to the top hashtag portion when you click on that so less times it's been posted the better it gives you that potential ability to be exposed have that exposure unless you're somebody with a big following who's going to get likes on the photo with that hashtag it's going to naturally bring because if you hit the hashtag now you're going to see top hashtags Mm. top top like photos using this hashtag and then recent photos so if people are using the word beautiful Every two seconds, it's just going to, every time you refresh your vi- your picture is going to get lost in translation. Mm-hmm. Unless people are just going through the hashtags and liking all the photos, trying to build their following that way. And then, you know, it's like a 13 or 14 year old girl that's watching your stuff. Cause it, that's all, that's how much time it, they have. <laughs> it could be that, or it could be bots that are just like liking photos. So that's coming up now. Well, it's been going on for quite some time and you'll see a lot of unnatural growth of people paying for subscription uh, or services, bought services where they're liking photos and following everybody and then unfollowing people automatically that don't follow you back. Um, I learned that. My daughter, uh, Emily said that. She's, my daughter's name is Emily. Yeah, well. yeah. Um, great name. She, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she said uh, the way Instagram works, Instagram works is a like for a like. Yeah. I'm like, okay. It used to be, you know, that was a, that was a popular hashtag. I found that when you first started Instagram back in like 20, 12 2013 so many years ago (laughs) it's been out for a while now it's funny to think like i i was on making videos before youtube was made and thinking about how fast the social digital platforms have transitioned but things like you know like for like was a way where if you like a photo and that was the thing everybody wanted the likes now everybody wants the follows and the and the likes subscription they don't care about money they don't care about um, whatever they just they just want the clout is what they would say they want the popularity um, and now there are services out there where people are automatically getting likes and follows generated for them through a AI service and then automatically unfollowing and I can't tell you how many times I've seen where like even my friends have unfollowed me and I'm like why are you like why did you unfollow me you know I message them like why are you unfollow me and it's almost like if somebody unfollows you on social media somehow that friendship is over it's done yeah. it's done it's that's how, like, well that's how it used to be with Facebook right yeah I'm yeah. no longer in a relationship with this person yeah it's like <laughs> oh okay um, so there's just a lot of ways that this is why people get caught up in the lifestyle or the clout that they see of other people because of services like that and it creates a really big mental game on other people where they're like how is this how is who is this person how are they getting all of these like subscribers or whatever yeah and, and it's so creepy super really creepy think, it's just so creepy the way it is now <laughs> right and um yeah oh here's a question for you sure. and again this is how the show goes we kind no, of digress of so youtube yeah cards what are cards on youtube so you know when you put up a video and it's like add cards oh yeah so the so youtube creator studio will have ways that you can edit different types of or sorry edit your videos after you've uploaded them so the cards will allow you to reference another youtube channel take you to your previous video um having end screens um you know there's there's just different ways where you can continuously link to other content on the platform and that's what youtube wants so there's different types of cards where you're like hey i did a collaboration with this person i'm going to add some sort of video card or some sort of um tag on the video that will link to their youtube channel Mm, that way it's consistently 
every platform wants you to stay on that platform Got and they it. want you to, and, and a one important way to grow your brand and to grow your social network is by collaboration. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that sometimes people go out of their way to collaborate with people that don't really relate to the content that they're making, mm -hmm. right? Because they think they, this person has a million followers and if they utilize that person, which may happen, but if it's not, if it's not kind of the same niche, no one's going to really vibe with that. I, I would think. Right. right. So one thing I always try and do is I look for relatively similar kinds of content where it's like family laughter fun and kind of work with that. And it's hard. It's actually hard to collaborate with people unless they're in your direct area. I'm from Cambridge, Ontario. I don't know many YouTubers in our area at all yeah. in the same kind of field. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm in the U.S. quite a bit for volleyball nice. and um, Twitter still huge down there. I only on I'm only on Twitter because I love watching what Donald <laughs> Trump does in the morning in the bathroom. One hundred percent. But but Twitter's just not very big up here. Is is that is is that true? What I'm seeing is is Twitter just Honestly, not big. Period. He, up here. Uh, I th I think it's relatively big. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's as big as platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Right. Um, but I feel like everybody has a Twitter account just so they can share certain thoughts or, or certain, certain expressions, whatever it might be. Twitter has always been something that I've struggled with in growing, but mm -hmm. it's also something I've never really focused on. And you'll see where people, you know, in, Instagram is like that one platform that everybody somehow has the most following, mm -hmm. but you'll see that it doesn't really transition into other channels. TikTok is another big thing, right? I see so many TikTok people that have a million plus followers on there but they'll have only 1,000 YouTube subscribers. It's crazy to see how they don't really integrate well with, that well with each other mm -hmm. um, or not as well as people might think. You think if you have a million followers and you make a video saying, hey, follow me on Twitter, those million or, or maybe 500, 1,000 are going to follow. It doesn't really translate. Um, and I think it's it has nothing to do with, you know, people are on that platform for a specific reason. They don't mm. want to go out to that platform. Um, Twitter... I've never really cared for, in my opinion. I utilize it when I can, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I more so focus on when like a specific event is happening, like yeah. the Oscars or or uh, an NHL game or something like that. But it's it's um, it's not something that I'm not really an expert on in utilizing, and it's not something I really have paid much attention to. I find it's it's almost more more B two B stuff, business to business. Like I mean, I'll go on there to to check out see if a, a realtor partner has moved companies sure. or. Um, if I need to get quick news, I'll go on to Instagram, um, Twitter, uh, Twitter. Yeah. See, yeah, that's another right? thing. I think it's more like the news, what's trending, yeah. po political stuff. Um, I think people, you know, the most people that have the biggest following are those that are in the political world. Yeah. And they're, you know, they can get out their thoughts in 120 or 180 characters. And uh, <laughs> or if, in case you're Donald Trump, like eight tweets. Yeah. And well, <laughs> and now, you know, you can you can write everything and then hit the plus button and keep going and keep going. Oh, no way. Can you? Yeah, really? it's, oh, man. Yeah. I, I like Twitter. I think it's I have done that. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a great uh, tool. Um, but again, it's, it's not something that I've really focused on. I would like to maybe try and focus on, but again, I see so many big YouTube platforms and they barely even have the following that they do on YouTube compared to Twitter. Yeah. And I think, like I said, in the U S the kids are on Twitter, they're on Instagram kind of, but Twitter is like the place to Twitter, be. They're yeah. huge there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It's it seems more of an American thing. I haven't spent a whole ton of time on it. Like I just, it's there, but like I said, I'll go there. Mm -hmm. And check the news and yeah stuff. I, I like the platform i think it's awesome and uh yeah it's just um it's something that i can hope to focus on but have never really done yeah. it yeah um okay you mentioned it a few times and i've heard my kids kind of talk about it so it must be something big coming uh -oh. what the heck is tiktok because <laughs> this is what i'll be doing tonight TikTok is already here it's not coming it's here <laughs> it's, yeah well you can um, tell me how many followers and viewers and holy cow yeah um it's uh it's it's a platform that's kind of or that's kind of um, amalgamated like Vine, Musically and Dub Smash all into one. Um you have the ability to make a 15 second video or you can make a 60 second video and you can be as creative as possible. I think it's probably the biggest app right now that people should have. It's a great way again that you can integrate other platforms like Snapchat, um Instagram where you can record I was going to ask that question. So can you do something on TikTok and it goes to Instagram? You can't like, you can't directly 
put it. Oh, sorry. You can't directly put it right there. Hmm. You can save the video and then upload. Got it. Right okay. Like with Instagram, you can post on Instagram and it goes to Facebook. Facebook, yeah, because yeah, they're the same know. company, so they'll they'll yeah. they'll allow that kind of collaboration. But uh, I think TikTok is one of the biggest apps that everybody should kind of really focus on um, and continue. There are concerns that people have around privacy and the fact that it's made uh, an app developed in China, which is a major concern for people. Huawei's watching. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, But it is a massive platform. And the thing with TikTok is there's, there's no one seems can seem to figure out the, the uh, algorithm. Mm. I can literally post a video today having no subscribers and no followers and it can just blow up like that Um, going on their for for you page and it can just take off and I can all of a sudden grow 10,000 subscribers or followers in one day Mm -hmm. right the thing is is that you have also again have to maintain consistency in posting Mm. um, and it also has to be something that's going to catch the attention of people Um, a platform that you're limited to the amount of characters you can do in your description and in the comments so it has to be really like direct um, but it's it's I think it's a really cool platform. That's awesome. So you mentioned this a few times. Yeah. I, I'll get your opinion on this. So I was talking to my brother yesterday. Sure. God bless him. Thirty three years old, still lives at home, and saving uh, money. I hope. Oh God, yeah. I hope for my mom's <laughs> sake. I, me too. Um, so he was out buying a phone, and he said, "You know, I'm really worried about privacy." And I said, "My comment to him was, buddy." If you have a cell phone and not a rotary phone at home, you don't have any privacy anyway. 100%. What's your What's your thoughts on? I have I have my phone and I'm trying to maintain my privacy online. Is there privacy anymore? I don't. I honestly don't think so. As soon as you put yourself out there, you you can be found. You you can be contacted. You you might there might be ways to restrict it, and you know companies will have privacy policy in place Mm -hmm. but i don't think you know unless you're living in remote area with no you know you're still sending letters by raven (laughs) um i really think your privacy is is limited you know i can probably say you know uh uh you know bathtubs 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 are out loud right now and my phone will probably start showing me bathtubs on facebook uh advertising soon i did that i googled we were we were just looking at a particular model of car to maybe buy yeah. and all of a sudden the next day facebook instagram just lit up like a christmas tree yeah. mazda 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 we're looking at a mazda cx9 mazda mazda I'm like seriously like seriously i think the one way you could potentially l- limit yourself with privacy is using vpn vpn codes yeah. using using secure networks but that's not going to r- remove the exposure on you know if you have a facebook profile and who can potentially search you or if you're using an email. Um, yeah. But the moment you enter in a search bar, you know, Amazon, if you're looking for a camera, like I look for camera f- equipment or lighting, that's all I get exposed to whenever I'm on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say, you know, it's like, like your it's life or death situation, but it's just businesses wanting to make money and they're finding ways to promote. Um, and as soon as you accept the agreement and terms and conditions on something, you know, they, I can assure you, and I'm a culprit of this, I can assure you nobody's reading the fine print of the thousand pages that a company has written. And, uh, you know, I've seen some funny videos about people that have apps in their fine print. Is just like, you're selling your soul to us, yeah, things like that. Pretty much. And it's so funny to see like that these are, we're just willing to accept because we want to use the platform. We yeah. don't, we don't care what, what it says. I don't think I've ever stopped to read that. What are you gonna do? Like, yeah. what are you gonna say no? <laughs> then you can't. They know. Yeah, they know, and then right. you can't. You can't use it. But uh, I right. think it's important to be aware of the type of platforms you want to use, and, and something that I need to be aware of as a, as a as a an adult and as a parent, as my kids get older, what platforms they're using, how are they, um, uh, how are they conversing with p- other people, mm-hmm. how are other people, you know, talking with them, and I don't want to ever restrict my kids from being a part of you know, social growth and things like that. But I also need, it's my responsibility as a parent to ensure that they're safe and not engaging in any uh, irregular activities, especially, you know, it's not that I can't worry about them. I worry about what other people are doing. Yeah. And that's a scary thought in the world. hundred percent. My mom used to say that when I was learning how to drive, she said, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about everyone else on the road. Right. It's the same sort of thing. hundred percent. 
hundred percent. And it's, and then it's a scary world out there. And you know, a podcast like crime junkie, you know, if you ever listen to stuff like that, that, it's a, it's a true crime podcast and you'll hear all these types of different things that people are doing. Um, and it just kind of gives you a different perspective of the world because they're literally taking the, the time to focus on the cruel things that have happened in the world with people missing, children dying, all this stuff. And it just kind of makes me think like, wow, we as a human species can be quite terrible. Quite messed up. <laughs> messed yeah. up, exactly. Oh. Um, yeah, and it just gives you a whole different lens when you have kids involved. Yeah. You know, how more sensitive you become to certain issues and how you can empathize with other people that go through that because you can kind of put yourself in their shoes and you just kind of have build this emotion mm-hmm. and thinking like, wow, what if, what if this was my kids for whatever it might be that could happen? And it's something that scares the living crap out of me for yeah. sure. <laughs> and that doesn't stop, eh? That, it, that fear does not no, stop it. No. And I think the more, the more there is that influence, we'll say, mm-hmm. and the more that there is that, no, let's call it no privacy. The more that there is those outlets and social media and and, and whatever, right? Yeah. Um, the more that fear is there, man. Hundred percent. Some weird stuff going on out there. Weird stuff, you yeah. know. No. Nope. So, so, here's a question, just really, really quick. Sure. How old are the kids going to be when they get phones? Oh man, <laughs> I don't even know. Never is not the answer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had a I had a cell phone and it was like one of those Samsung flip phones. Yep. In, in the twelfth grade, it was a pay as you go. <laughs> So, and you know, you'd have to actually click three, uh, you know, three times oh, on a button the to get A, B, C. T9. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. That's something, you know, wherever, wherever it gets easier in one area, it gets so harder in another as they get older. Yeah. I worry about things like education. I'm like, I got four kids. How am I going to afford their education? Um, all I'm thinking is the least I can do is just put money aside and try and get them a yeah. good start and then say, Hey, I worked, I worked part time when I was in college. Um, so kind of hopefully setting up up for that success phones is a totally different story i don't even know what phones are going to be like when they're when they're older it's you know true. what i mean but it, it's crazy to think like we don't really use um we don't use uh house landlines anymore right we don't have so one. If, if if kids want to try and call you know an emergency services do they even know how to call 911 it's uh, it's an interesting fact until they actually physically get that cell phone. Yeah. I feel like though it will probably be relatively early stages, like yeah. you know when they're ten walking to school on their own. I think that's something that might be like a good opportunity, and we're no longer kind of walking with them. Yeah, you know, because there's gonna be a it's point. Different for everybody, I'm just yeah. trying to soak up the amount of time that my kids actually want to hang out with me and uh, and spend <laughs> time true. with me. Right? They they look at me. You know, I come home every day. I'm like the superhero that's greeted. Yo, daddy's home. Daddy's home. Or uh, you know, everybody wants to lay with me. I'm the most popular guy. It's the best feeling in the world. I got. I can't let go of this. I can't. I can't. So I'll just give you a glimpse into your future. Um, <laughs> so my son now walks from his bedroom to the kitchen in his boxers, topless, <laughs> with his earphones in, watching YouTube. Yeah. He doesn't actually, you know, talk to people. No. Comes in, makes his food, brings it to his room, and we joke as he's as he's walking back because he can't hear us anyway. Talking to you, Kyle. Yep. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> you know. Hey, at least he can make his own food. That's pretty <laughs> I impressive. Guess that's true. I guess it, well, it depends on the food he's making, though. <laughs> it's you know he's actually a pretty fit kid, but you know he's he's he'll make you know ramen noodles and an egg with cheese, and I'm like, oh my god, we, and this is YouTube, man. These yeah. are YouTube videos. <laughs> All right, I'm on that actually. I'm on that because no one would believe me sometimes. Some of the stuff we see. So. Oh, hundred um, hundred percent. But it, it's it's really interesting with how people get invested into the platform, and and some people just like to watch, and other people's like other people like to create. And I'm a creator. I don't really make time to watch other people. So when other people are like, "Hey, have you heard this person?" I'm like. No, not really. No, I have time. Maybe if I had the time to watch, sure. Um, I barely can just get a podcast in while I'm driving to work. But, uh, you know, I think about Corey, who who was so shy on the camera and didn't really want to be. And I'm like, you know, and I see her. She's She loves watching other videos, other YouTubers. Mm-hmm. She'll talk to me about like, oh, I wish I could partner with this brand. And I'm like, well, we could. You have to put in the effort. You have a major platform that mm-hmm. you can grow. I'm like, I'm at work every day. And I and like I'm generally the one trying to post in the evenings or whatever, mm-hmm. and I really try and rely on her. But sometimes I really have to have a tough conversation where she's like, 
you always bring this up. You always talk to me about this. I'm like, well, it's just a reality. And I'm just trying to put that thought in your pros in your, in your mind, because you're wasting your time and your day getting in this circle of scrolling and scrolling when you have a platform of people that actually want to in, in uh, you know, communicate with you and, yeah. and see what you're up to and talk to you. And, um, yeah, it's, that's yeah, she's some... a mother of triplets. And if you said she's, she's shy, man, she's coming out of her shell. Oh yeah. She's completely <laughs> out of her shell. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I think she's, she's got a great message. She's a, a mom with four kids. Corey, and, Corey like, is out of her yeah. shell, but she's still what I call a closet vlogger. <laughs> Because she'll only vlog in the house. She'll only vlog in the van with us. But if we're out in public, she'll wait for people to not be around. She'll go into a, a like a secluded area. Just be like, hey, everybody, welcome back to the She's vlog. She's looking over her shoulder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, if people are naturally around. Whereas me... I'm vlogging everywhere. I'm, I, you know, I'll, I'll be like in in uh, A and W restaurant. I'll be like, yo, everybody, I'm at A and W right now. Things yeah. like that. Or, um, you know, I'll be out in a park with a lot of other people. Um, I, yeah, I come to the term that I can't. I have a platform. People want it to kind of talk with us or communicate with us on. Mm -hmm. um, I can't be worried about what other people think of me, and that's what stops a lot of people. The mm -hmm. fear behind the judgment of others and the fear behind what other people are going to say when the video is posted. Yeah, you got it. You got to lose that, or else it's going to stop you from conveying the message you want to do, and it's going to stop you from creating the content over a period of time. People find this this natural um, this natural fire or ignition to start to start recording, mm. but it never lasts because people aren't consistent. And they, they say, you know, I'm only getting 10 views. Well, that's 10, 10 people that are viewing your video, yep. right? It's great to have viral success. It's awesome. But the one thing that we've struggled with and that Corey is, is that she's always wanting to chase that viral, that viral video amount of views again. Yeah. And it's just something that's not going to happen, right? It may or may not happen, but now it's just more re maintaining consistency and relevancy of people that actually want to follow us. And it's so amazing when somebody's just like, I love watching your family. I've seen this video a million times or I've been following you since you posted that first video. Greetings from Germany. Greetings from India. <laughs> greetings from Australia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether it's 10 people or 50 people, I'm so excited and so happy that people actually take the time to follow what we're doing and what kind of message or adventures or things that we're trying to convey to others um, and to show a little bit of our lifestyle of what other of what we go through as parents. Mm -hmm. We don't post everything. We want to maintain some sort of privacy if there is. Whatever is left of it. Whatever is yeah. left of it. Yeah. But, you know, we always like talking about, you know, what we're doing, what we're having for dinner, uh, you know, what our house looks like, where we're going on adventure, what we've done to travel with four kids. We just got back from Alberta. It was our first time. Did on you the, fly? We flew. It was oh, our first God. time. We normally drive, right? The triplets were yeah. born the first week. We went to, uh, we went to Buffalo just to travel or walk around Walden Gallery Mall. Uh, we did a road trip to Vegas and, and California with our four kids and Florida. How old were they when you needed that? The first time they traveled there was uh, t one, one or two. Crazy two. bugger. Yeah. We, like the thing is, is that... <laughs> Um, one bit, one of my biggest messages with kids is to say, we, you know, you can still have all the incredible life experiences that you want to have with mm -hmm. kids. It's just that you do it a little different. Yeah. Of course. Um, I've never felt like my kids have ever stopped me from doing things. It's just mm -hmm. always, you know, I either have to budget a little more or I just have to wait a little longer more or planning or, or a little different of planning. And it's hard for me to plan. Corey's a planner. Mm -hmm. I'm a Let's just figure it out and we'll go with it. Oh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> and with kids, it doesn't always. It's something more yeah. to work for especially, you. <laughs> especially in winter season. You know, if I yeah. can go on a whim to California where it's nice all the time and I'm like, yeah, we just got a pair of shorts, got a diaper, whatever. Um, yeah. I'm cool with that. But, you know, going to a place like Alberta, you know, we need snow pants, boots, mitts, hats, and we got to travel. But uh, the thing is that we did for this trip that we just got back from you know, we only brought one suitcase. We brought three pairs of clothes each for the kids. Mm -hmm. And then we just did some laundry midweek. And okay. they we put all their clothes in their each individual school backpacks. And then we made room for their snow pants and their boots. And then my clothes in the one big bag. Corey brought her own backpack. It was the most budget-free experience I've ever had. You know what I mean? It was amazing. I didn't have to bring like eight suitcases. Yeah. Um, didn't have to load up the van. And the, the airline actually took our baby seats, our car seats, for free onto the flight too, which awesome. I didn't know that they did that. Yeah. But I was just like, 
this was a lot easier than I thought. And it made me want to travel and fly more as opposed to drive. But one thing is that I loved as a kid was driving long distance Mm -hmm. to see the countryside of everything, like traveling from North America to Alberta with our kids two years in a row. They're going to go again this summer, traveling to Florida or Texas. We've all done California, Vegas. It's, uh, it's been amazing, but I've never felt like I can let my kids stop me from doing anything. Wow. So just really quick, funny story. Our kids never stopped us from doing that, but Tracy and I, Tracy's my wife, mm-hmm. we've stopped each other from doing it. We just <laughs> Last summer, we drove to BC to see her family. Yeah. I'm an oldest child. I'm always right. She's the oldest child. She's <laughs> always right. Two rights. And, and we went with wrong? her. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And we went with her with, her, with Emily, who was 16, and she was in the back seat. Kyle didn't come. Smart kid. <laughs> um, and... Uh, uh, that wasn't a pleasant drive to BC and back. So we, we have learned for our marriage yeah. to last and to stay intact. We're never going to do that again, ever, ever, <laughs> ever. At one point, and I don't know if maybe this was the beginning of the end of the patients. I said, hey, sweetie, why don't we listen to Dr. Laura, the, the book that she wrote about the 10, what is it, the 10 thing of making your marriage work. <laughs> so that pot, that book lasted, that audio book lasted about three minutes. Yeah. And then we switched to something else. <laughs> so we she now know. probably already we offended that. She's like, oh, so our marriage isn't working now? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, all about finding what works and, and what works with your kids and your family and things you should not do. <laughs> oh, 100%. Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I've always just felt like, you know, if we're traveling wherever, I'm a really patient person and I have a really great sense of humor. Sometimes it works for Corey, sometimes it doesn't. But Corey is also a big worry wart. And I'm like, Corey, relax, let's settle down. And she doesn't kind of take light to that sometimes. Yeah. But it's, it's also yeah, just I, like, I've learned you know, you're not supposed to say that to your wife, eh? What's that? Settle down, calm down. I, 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 I keep trying to, sorry, my wife keeps reminding me of that. You're not supposed to say that. Yeah. Like, I oh, just tell sorry. her, I'm just like, relax. I oh. said, let them be kids. I know. But, um, <laughs> you know, if, if we go to the movie theater, yeah, we just take up a couple extra, pretty much a whole row. Yeah. If we go to the restaurant, we just take up a couple extra chairs. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just, we're both willing to work together, put the work in. And we like, we like the adventure of doing things as a family and it's, you know, teaching the kids the value of doing everything together. It's not, you know, but also one of the struggles is, you know, okay, we do everything together, but how am I going to get that one-on-one time with everybody? And it's hard, you know, for somebody like me who is working. And then as soon as I involve only one, everybody else wants to come too. Right. And I really have to try and say, Hey, you know, I want to spend time with each and and every one of you individually so I can have a one-on-one relationship with you as well. But sometimes, you know, they're still young and they don't really understand. But I always tell them, you know, we're going to go to a hockey game together, me and you, next week. Or we're Mm going to go to a movie together, me and you. Um, Or even just going to McDonald's, you can play at the play place. Mm -hmm. But you'll see whenever there's a place where you can go and they're not, you know, and it's a place where they can all be, they won't be as active or as involved as if they were all together. And it's really unique to kind of see that. That is that is. Very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to grow up like that, I'm sure. Cause well, that, I mean, they just, they just seem like they're, they're all just kind of cool with each other. I was know? close with my brothers and yeah. my family and I kind of want to keep the importance and stressing that. Yeah. Um, and I hope, I hope, you know, I hope I can continue to do a good job or at least I'm thinking of doing a good job, yep. but I hope that that can keep going a hundred percent. Yeah. That's for awesome. Sure. That's awesome. So what's next? Uh, they're almost not babies anymore. Is everybody it, everybody yeah. see like the, the, the tween gang and then yeah. the teen so gang. A, everybody thinks like about what the name changes. And Corey and I have talked about it a number of times, even earlier in the baby gang stage. And, you know, what, what are we going to do when the babies are no longer babies? Well, I also said that we could leave it the way it is because no matter how old they get, they're always going to be our babies. Yeah. So I could potentially do it. I've already branded it so much as the baby gang. Um and then not just taking it to the baby gang, but doing the baby gang family. Mm. So it just kind of takes away from like, they're no longer babies. It's just that this is our family mm-hmm. or just completely changing the name. Mm. But, it, you know, I am so attached to what it is now yeah. that I, I don't know if I could change it. It is the brand. It's the brand. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we'll always have the ability to share experience of what we've gone through as parents of multiple children from the baby stage mm-hmm. and still opening to the ability to, to talk about new products that might help new parents, new parents with multiple children or one baby or whatever. It's, there's so many different ways or ventures that we can go down. Um, 
I just want to continue to maintain some sort of relevancy. I want to keep posting content. I want to try and grow certain areas, certain channels. My, my focus is trying to build Instagram naturally is really challenging to build. Yeah. And then of course, TikTok, Facebook, I'm no longer really kind of focusing on much anymore. I'll still post there. There's still a lot of people, people starting to move on from that. I, I think so too, but there's still a lot of people that do use it and I do get quite decent amount of engagement. It's just that once you promote a video, you, the platform will suppress everything going forward. Yeah. That's just one thing that I've noticed. I used to get so much natural engagement. I'd post a video and it'd be like, we reached a hundred thousand people. Now, if I post a photo with 500,000, it's reaching like 10,000 people yeah. and getting a hundred likes or 300 likes. Right. So it's almost like, well, that's, there's, there's a major, major disconnect there. And I get it. Facebook and Instagram publicly traded companies yeah. all want you to pay for the promotion on their platform. Um, to get exposure, but you really have to pick and choose, right? Because if you're just promoting everything, one, it just becomes unnatural and unauthentic and not genuine. And then two, it just becomes uh, an extreme cost to yeah, you for sure. Absolutely. Cause it, it's not cheap. It is. I mean, it's cheap, but it's not, uh, you got to look at the value. Yeah. Well, right? and the thing is you see no real, you see no real, uh, like it, it, it'll estimate what your your exposure is. There's no guarantee, so you're paying that, and you 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 can pay what whatever the exposure is, but it's not something that's truly valuable. Yeah, things like that. So, yeah, even true. with YouTube, we have 720,000 subscribers, right? Our mother versus triplets plus toddler was such a great entry point into our channel, but it's something that. Uh, you know, we, we had a hard time seeing like, okay, this is great. It's getting views here and we're seeing a slight increase, but it's not really translating the way we want to onto other videos. Mm. So we really have to always think about the type of video we're creating. Um, really what's important is the title that you're doing, the descriptions, similar yeah. hashtags, and of course the thumbnail, which catches the eye of everybody, right? What it's kind like of thumbnail? hashtag hell, man? I, I, when I'm going through some, of them, I'm like, oh, what hashtag? What hashtag? What hashtag? What hashtag? Yeah, it's it's so it's important on it, YouTube too now. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, now you can put you, uh, hashtags in the description of the video, and then when you look at a video, oh, it'll okay. show the hashtags that you're using. And I always try and choose only. You can only it'll only um, re uh, reflect three. Yeah. So I choose three of the biggest hashtags, but I always try and maintain the relation to the video itself. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, good. Another idea. Good, good, yeah, good. I yeah. love it. Okay. All these little things. Eh? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I learn a lot of things from, you know, following people like Gary Vee, for example, he's really great. A good podcaster that I enjoy. Great content guy. Gary Vee's a podcaster. Yeah. I don't, he's, a, he's more of an entrepreneur and a, and a content creator, but you know, I learn a lot of key messaging from stuff that he says, mm -hmm. you know, like the ability to eliminate the fear and the, the worry of what other people are going to think. He's big on spreading and promoting that kind of message. Yeah. Um, I don't always agree with everything he says, but um, I find him to be extremely realistic when it comes to kind of, you know, creating your content and I mean, what you kind take of a thing out here and there. Like, I mean, you're not going to agree with everything, but you're going to take a thing here, a thing there, and just 100%. take it from And there. there's a reason why people like him are in the position that he's in because yeah. of his messaging and things like that. And you really need to, you you really need to open and remove any kind of tunnel vision, and you need to open and widen your your uh, your your horizons to see what other people are doing, whether it's related to you or not, mm -hmm. and seeing how you can take bits and pieces from everyone else and integrate that into your messaging and what you're trying to do, and trying to be genuine too. Yeah, uh, yeah, not like anything. Right? I think I think it's great to use people as motivation, but not to become that person. Yeah, you want to. Good wanna, way to put it. Yeah, it, people are great motivators, but motivate to become yourself. Oh, sorry. Motivate to become yourself, but not other people. Yeah. Right. And sometimes we get caught in uh, a loophole where we want to be just like the person that, you know, where we pretty much copy everything that they do. Yeah. Right. And that to me is not genuine or authentic. That, but that takes time to get there. It does. I know when I first started, like I, I look at my first podcast and I'm like, all right, now I'm like sitting back, kind of <laughs> recline back, feet are like I'm holding the coffee. Now it's like, you, you get natural, you get your own style. And with my little Steven and 60 second video series, same thing. It's like, you know, you, you almost make it up as you go, but, sure. but because it's more genuine, hundred percent, you know, it's, it's a little more natural, right. Yeah. As opposed to planning out a script or whatever. Well, right? and that's so. the thing, right? And, and when you plan out a script, you try and focus on sticking to the script. And then you, once you mess up, it just domino effect, right? Yep. Keeping it uh, completely natural and, and a hundred percent genuine, I think is super important for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Dan, 
thank you thank for you. coming. I know I know your time is tight and it's you got a lot all, of responsibility. It's, it's all good with me. Um, shameless plug time. So <laughs> where can people get a hold or not get a hold of you? I do not want people calling you. Call me. Anytime. Yeah, no, no, don't. <laughs> Careful. Show up at my will. house. <laughs> Show up at my house. <laughs> um, give me your give me your handles for uh, Instagram, Facebook, sure. uh, YouTube, and TikTok. Okay. Uh, can I do my website too? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, right, go perfect. for it. Shameless plug, uh, baby, you, all day. You can find our website at www.thebabygang.com. Something that we want to utilize a little more. It's where we do kind of our blogs um, and some of our promotions uh, around product uh, that we've partnered with. Uh, also, Instagram at official baby gang, YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash the baby gang. And then a tick, TikTok is official baby gang as well. Awesome. Perfect. I'll, you'll be one of the first people I follow on TikTok tonight when Respect. I go home and load thank that up. You, thank you. <laughs> then you can see some of the challenges that we do. Um, some yeah. blow up, some don't. But you know what? It's all for the love of it. And that consistency is super important. Yeah. I was talking to someone today. Uh, they just send an email. I mean, nothing special. They're like, we send this email every Friday. And he said, like, do people even read it? I'm like, I, I do when I want to. But you're consistent. I know every Friday afternoon I get this email from you, period. I just know, yeah. right? So, yeah, totally about consistency. Well, and that's the thing when you, you know, I remember somebody asked me a question earlier, which was, was like, how often do you post, right? It's great. I think it's important to have a, some sort of structure, mm -hmm. but also you need to realize if it's realistic for your lifestyle or not, mm -hmm. right? And one thing we've come to terms is that, you know what, ideally we would like to post one to two videos per week. We don't know when we're going to post them. So sometimes it's a mystery, right? And, you know, we do get some feedback where it's just like, hey, I've been waiting for another baby gang video. When are you guys posting another vlog, right? We'll go weeks. We'll go sometimes maybe a month before we post or whatever. But we're still posting other places. Mm -hmm. But um, it is important to realize that depending on your time, your consistency, what your, what your common goal is, to come up with some sort of routine. So that way people are in the habit of following along with a journey and can make it so they can know how can I fit this in my life? Cause it's something I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's something we do struggle with because of our natural lifestyle, having four kids, balancing dinner, getting ready for school, brushing teeth, bedtime routine, whatever it might be going out, uh, you know, just for us to explore or do things together as a family. Mm -hmm. It is a struggle, mm -hmm. right? And it's hard because we're just two people and I would love to opportunity to try and bring somebody into the mix but it's also like challenging because it's our kids. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. One day you will get to, my wife and I were sitting there the other day and they were like, it's Friday night. Kyle's working. Emily's working. Let's make a TikTok, baby. Let's get <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, Dan, it was, oh, we get to go to sleep early. <laughs> That's so great. Frenchie gets that. All four of your kids will have jobs and they're out for a bit. Oh, oh no. So for great. us, it was, oh, you get to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I can take a nap and I don't have to worry. <laughs> That's exactly uh, it. That's, that's so great. Oh, that's man. So great. Listen, again, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll have to it. have you yes. back again yes, to, to give us an update on, like, social media and what's happening and stuff like that. So, so. we can keep growing and keep focusing and that's maintain it. that relevancy and consistency. And I'm just – honestly, I'm blessed to – have these connections with so many people around the world and, oh, yeah. you know, share, share our family. And, you know, I feel for people that can't have a family and they kind of live through us a little bit. Um, yeah. you know, so it's, it's a, it's a true blessing, whether to me it lasted a year or a day or a month. I'm just super grateful to see where this, where this has all kind of grown to and yeah. to meet a lot of the and other four influences. years already. And you're still going strong. It's it crazy too, to think right? about. Yeah. It's four years into it. And I feel like there's so much I still need to learn and still need to do, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a blessing. And one thing I want to keep focusing on is how I can continue to give back to people. Yeah. I love, love, love giving and I love community involvement and I love trying to impact and change people's lives. And hopefully I can grow my platform so big that I can focus it on a much larger scale, but um, one day at a time, one day at a time. That's it, man. Yeah, That's awesome. Exactly how it comes down to you. So, all right. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Folks, until next time, we will talk to you soon. And there you go. There is part two with Dan Gibson, creator of the Baby Gang. Hey, make sure you do follow him on his social media handles. He's really, really cool with a lot of the stuff he does. Um, just real, genuine, um, just neat stuff. So make sure you do follow him. Take a look at his, uh, especially his YouTube channel. So, Thanks for listening. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. 
Thank you for listening to the Green Effect Podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Google Play so you catch the next episode. And don't forget to leave a review. Much appreciated.